Uh, hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about the, one of the biggest challenges in 2020 and beyond in, in SEO, in especially in technical SEO, uh, about indexing your content. Something that we were kind of used to for uh, for quite a few years that basically you would publish your content and this would automatically get indexed in Google is no longer something we, we just get for free. Uh, we actually need to do quite a lot of work to get our content index and it doesn't really depend on uh, if your website is a JavaScript website or an HTML website. It kind of got a little bit more complex and this is something I want to talk about here in this video today. So let's dive right into it. First of all, one of the most important things to remember is that, actually to know, uh, is that we can't really uh, say that there are like JavaScript websites and HTML websites anymore. It all kind of got um, mixed up. I, I think it's very difficult nowadays to find an HTML website that's not using some part of their website uh, with um, JavaScript uh, pieces, JavaScript modules, uh, and so on. Uh, JavaScript components, I think, would be the best name for that. So this is something to, to have in mind that we can't really say that you have an HTML website and you're safe with indexing anymore. And this is something I'm going to explain in depth in, in a minute. Basically, throughout our, our research um, over the last few months, we found out that JavaScript is a problem of HTML websites, uh, so we can't really say anymore, as I said previously, that this is uh, that, that you have some problem with like two waves of JavaScript indexing only for JavaScript powered website. One actually one thing that's extremely important, something that I wanted to stress here is that in the SEO community we are used to uh, what I call post factum learning. We are actually waiting most of the time we're waiting for something to break completely until we start acting upon that. In this case, uh, the, the biggest problem with, uh, with what we're observing is that the change is happening extremely, extremely slowly. So the change is constantly happening, the change in how Google and other search engines are indexing and interacting with our content. This is basically happening very, very slowly. We don't have that uh, case study that we're all used to where something drops or um, something breaks completely and we are uh, we can act on it. So right now it's happening very slowly and we as a community should have that in mind uh, that basically there is not going to be one massive drop uh, for us to react. And I wanted to start slow with something extremely, extremely easy, in my opinion very geeky uh, to show. I wanted to start with medium.com case study. And this problem is, is not the biggest one we saw, but it's actually quite ironic, quite interesting interesting to, to observe. So enter irony here, uh, the cost of JavaScript is one of the most popular, uh, if not the most popular articles in the um, both uh, web performance community, JavaScript community and uh, web development community that somehow is touching on, on technical SEO as well. And something you have to know is that this article was written by Andy Osmani, who's actually one of the Googlers. So he's very, very accomplished, very smart guy. Uh, make sure to follow him. He's actually one of the guys we, uh, as both technical SEO web performance committee, we all look up to him for, for, for knowledge, for all the insight, like, like this article. What's actually interesting that this article was written, I think it's 2018, and if you look at some of the comments we, and you Google those, you won't find those comments in Google, which is quite interesting, especially if we look at the fact that uh, actually this article is heavily linked. It was very popular, as I mentioned, so it has more than 500 referring domains to just to this page, uh, more than 2,000 backlinks. What's actually even more interesting, this comment is more than one year old at the moment of recording this video. What we should actually discuss today is the time frame of, uh, of indexing some of the elements within your page or basically lack of thereof. So basically the problem of um, how soon some of the elements are going to be indexed and what happens is some of elements of your page, of your website uh, are never going to be indexable or never going to be found and indexed uh, by search engines. 
So it's 2019, our, and our research is showing that there are hundreds of thousands of domains that are not fully indexed. And there are multiple reasons for that. Let me start with uh, some of the basics here for, uh, of how um, Google and other search engines most likely as well, but we're gonna use Google as an example in this video, how Google is rendering and indexing your content. So how rendering works with Google? In general, rendering is a new concept in, in, in SEO. Uh, it basically means processing all of your HTML and JavaScript and CSS into a fully rendered page. So how rendering works with Google is something that I was talking to both John Miller and Martin Split in Zurich um, this year uh, when they invited me to be a part of Google Hangouts. Uh, so basically the conversation was about, um, I was actually asking both John Miller and Martin Split about how does it work with two waves of JavaScript indexing and they explained that they look at the difference between the rendered version of, of, of your content and not rendered and they look if there are any differences. It's all based on heuristics. Heuristics basically look for changes. So they look, okay, uh, rendering the page is changing the content completely or not. Uh, and th therefore we're gonna have to go with two waves of, of indexing in the future, or we basically are gonna have to render that page in the future to see all of the content uh, pushed out by, um, by the webmaster. Um, and the problem is that those heuristics are, as I say, Martin Splitz uh, mentioned himself, that he didn't uh, fully grasp uh, what exactly triggers them. Those heuristics are most likely built with some kind of machine learning that's not really human readable, so this is not Martin's fault. This is my assumption that this, those heuristics, the, the whole um, logistics of how uh, rendering or triggering rendering works is based on machine learning learning. So this probably is something that's going to be very difficult for both SEOs and in this case Googlers to fully grasp, fully understand. And the biggest issue I think right now is those heuristics are still in their infant page. We're still in at the very, very beginning of that journey with, uh, with building, uh, we, <laughs> Google is at the very beginning of this journey of building proper heuristics of how uh, to index, um, how to index content that depends on elements like JavaScript, for example, but not only that. Uh, so when is rendering needed? And they have to decide that because rendering is expensive for a lot of pages. So they have to decide, okay, do we really need to render that page uh, all the time, that website all the time, or can we maybe just drop that completely and we're gonna still have access to all of the content. And the, the, the one important thing is that all new websites get rendered. Uh, this is something that Googlers told me in Zurich. This is something that kind of changed how we look at a lot of our experiments. And this is actually why we're not gonna play with like experimenting with websites on staging. Uh, because a lot of our experiments, if not most of our experiments, were all built on brand new websites. Uh, and they show that Google is getting much better with indexing because Google is rendering all the new websites by default. But this is actually bringing us to one more issue. What is a new website exactly? So how do we define a new website? Uh, is a website where we just relaunch the CMS, we relaunch some parts of the code, a new website, or does it have to be a new domain and so on? So what's a new website exactly? So if Google is visiting medium.com to see, okay, rendering didn't change anything, but then after a week or a month, some comments appear on that page, uh, is that heuristics uh, heuristic is going to be triggered again or not there are a lot of questions to be asked uh, before we fully understand that part basically we at one we decided to experiment with how good google is with um with their heuristics this is something that we wanted to play with and we built quite a lot of experiments in that department we repeated some of the old experiments and long story short we found that google is actually extremely good with indexing all 
all of the JavaScript content on new domains. This is very important to stress. Google is indexing almost all of the new content on new domains. But let's go back to 2017 and see one of our experiments that was always failing. And that's actually one of the experiments I want to mention without going through all of the experiments we've, we, we went through, just to show you a very, very interesting change in how Google is indexing the, the content in 2019. So our experiment from 2017 was basically checking if uh, Google is following the links uh, created by JavaScript. So we had homepage and basically to get to page number six, you had to go through all the depth, like all the different sub pages. And this is how we would see, okay, Google followed uh, page number five to page number six. So you would see how deep uh, the Google bot is gonna go into your domain. And in 2017, mode, so I can't help you with that at the moment. That was creepy. So um, the crawler budget experiment in 2017 basically showed that Google is indexing all of the HTML, but the Google bot didn't follow uh, all of the, actually just went from homepage to uh, nested page by following a JavaScript link. And then it gave up completely until today. So actually two years later, uh, most of the content within uh, this uh, website is still not indexed. So, so that was a massive problem and we could see, okay, uh, Google is really probably picking, like cherry picking the pages uh, built with JavaScript. They're, they're gonna index just to save or mm, maybe uh, somehow uh, play with the resources they have at, at hand. But the fun fact is repeating this experiment, the same very experiment, the same code, the same uh, content on a new domain in 2019, we did it a few times and most of the content was indexed within hours. And all of the JavaScript content was indexed. I think that the longest uh, period we had to wait was like eight, 10 hours to index all of the uh, JavaScript uh, pages. Basically, Google was following all the links injected by JavaScript uh, very, very efficiently and quickly. So this was something new. This was something we realized that this it, it didn't work like that before. We can safely assume and completely agree with Martin Split here that uh, Google is re rendering and indexing uh, all the new JavaScript web websites without any issues. The problem is that this is only for new websites and we have no idea so far how long this kind of honeymoon phase is gonna, uh, gonna, gonna last. So this is something we, uh, we basically struggled with and we've decided to move out and start experimenting with real life websites. That was the only solution for us to see uh, some kind of actionable, actionable data we can share with the SEO community. And we've started um, gathering data and experimenting with websites uh, with basically big brands using uh, different parts of um, big brands that are HTML websites using uh, JavaScript just for tiny bits of their uh, content. And with this experiment, we basically started with a lot of JavaScript powered websites just to just to see, okay, are there any JavaScript powered websites that are fully indexable by Google and they're fully, and they're just ranking properly and it, is, it does work well. And we found quite a few websites that are 100% JavaScript, meaning that if you switch off JavaScript, most of the content is gonna disappear. That work very, very well with search engines. In this example, um, National Geographic, you can have a look. This this is National Geog Geographic with JavaScript, and this is National Geographic without JavaScript. You can see that all of the content actually disappeared, but still Google had no issues crawling, indexing uh, all of this content, regardless of the JavaScript. ASOS, the same story. With JavaScript, the website works perfectly fine. Without JavaScript at, uh, at the same time, all of the content is gone. We are only left with the top menu that I'm actually not sure if it's working without JavaScript and uh, an image. But still, Google had no issues here and indexing all of this JavaScript content, which is a good thing. We didn't find too many examples, if any examples like that two years ago. So we can see Google is really making a massive progress to make those websites rank, to make to crawl them and to index them fully. Uh, moving forward, 
Uh, unfortunately, not every website is lucky enough or as lucky as National Geographic or ASOS. And this is something to show here. So, so yeah, we're gonna get to the moment where we're gonna see a lot of HTML indexing issues, but just to finish with, with JavaScript examples. So percentage of JavaScript content index for a lot of big brands uh, that are not JavaScript websites uh, is actually extremely shocking and something I uh, didn't see coming. So we'll have a look at some of the brands like Urban Outfitters. They actually have 0% of the content that relies on JavaScript. So parts of their website that rely on JavaScript uh, are not indexed. So for Urban Outfitters, it's 0% of the content. J.Crew as well, Topshop 0%. Sephora has 42% of their content that relies on JavaScript indexed. Uh, H&M, 73% of their JavaScript content is indexed. And obviously, a German efficiency here. So T-Mobile, 82% uh, of their content that relies on JavaScript is indexed. So we can see, okay, this is a massive issue here, but we're still talking about, uh, about parts of the content that rely on JavaScript. But it gets a little bit more complex. So now we're gonna get a little bit geeky, but let me walk you through that step by step. So I crawled H&M with and without JavaScript rendering, just to compare how different of a website graph Google and other search engines are seeing when crawling without rendering and with rendering. Um, and this is actually without, this is the, the screenshot from the crawl without JavaScript um, rendering or without rendering in general. And we can see, okay, there is something massively and very, very wrong with H&M website because out of 50,000 URLs I crawled, 43,000 uh, URLs are canonicalized. So we can see, okay, out of 50,000, that makes it 80, 6%-ish of the, of the content is completely not indexable when we're crawling without JavaScript indexing. So this is, this is a massive issue right here. Uh, with JavaScript and crawling, uh, with JavaScript uh, indexing, we can see, okay, this crawl is getting a little bit better, but this, the, the size of the crawl, even though the limit was 50,000, changed completely. So there are completely two websites, completely two different website graphs, depending on if we switch on or switch off JavaScript uh, rendering. So this is something to have in mind that even for websites like H&M, that's not a JavaScript website, this is something we would call for years an HTML website, HTML powered website or whatever. Uh, we can see that this is a massive problem. This is where I actually need to explain what usually relies on JavaScript because there are different parts of websites uh, that rely on JavaScript. The uh, suspect <laughs> number one is uh, use the pagination. So for quite a lot of websites, including H&M, uh, pagination relies on JavaScript. In case of H&M, if we switch off pagination, we only will see a person, like small percentage of the products available and there is no other way to find it, but maybe sitemaps. And the next one uh, is you may also be interested in or some other forms of interlinking, like uh, related articles, related products, and so on. So you might also like part is very often, very, very, very often uh, relying on JavaScript to work. And top products, also something we see quite often in a lot of e-commerce stores, that top products very often rely on JavaScript and without JavaScript, Google is really not seeing those links. Uh, reviews, again, quite popular problem. Comments, we actually talked about that in, in case of Medium, in the case study of medium.com. And main content, this is not that often. This is not happening that often. We saw that for in case of ASOS or National Geographic, but usually main content in hopefully uh, it's gonna stay that way in most cases uh, relies on HTML so it's visible without rendering and the roots of the problem this is something actually that's very very interesting for non -techn technical people the roots of the problem come from the fact that no one is ever no one is anymore writing all the websites or creating all the websites from scratch so we're past that time when a developer would sit down and 
code an e-commerce store in HTML or PHP or whatever. Most websites use ready-to-go components and they build uh, websites or most developer use, the developers use uh, ready-to-go components and they basically build a website using some uh, some out of like some, some, some elements. Just like an example, if you're a WordPress user, for example, you will use a lot of plugins or templates for different parts of the website. Most of the people, most of the webmasters won't start coding that from scratch. In, in, in most cases, the, the components we're talking about are like one for the menu, one for a slider, one for main content, faces navigation, comments, uh, related product, and so on. So if we, if those rely on JavaScript, Google won't see that. Uh, well, and this is again, there is a very good chance that Google won't see that Google may actually be indexing that content, but this is still something where we're, we're, we're trying to understand a little bit better. In most cases, Google is not uh, really uh, indexing that uh, instantly, and this leads to a lot of a lot of issues. And rendering delay, delay leads to two different uh, websites and two different website graphs, something we saw in the crawl of H&M. So if we have uh, here hnm.com, we have homepage category uh, and subcategory, let's say we have H&M, we go to ladies or men or whatever, we go to jeans and then we have different, uh, different types of jeans. And then, okay, with JavaScript, everything works. We can see all of the products, all subcategories, all the filters, and so on. But once JavaScript is not rendered by a search engine, uh, we are actually stuck with just category pages without pagination. So we see, for example, 36 pairs of jeans out of 200 and Google is having a problem with finding all of your products and this leads us to the time frame So okay, we see okay. There's some kind of problem with indexing. What's the time frame of indexing of that content? and, and we actually looked into quite a lot of big brands. We, we started checking, okay What's the percentage of JavaScript content indexed after two weeks? And if we look at like New York Post, okay, and they, they did very well, 100% of the JavaScript content, so just the content that relies on JavaScript was indexed after two weeks. But moving to, um, to for example, The Guardian or CNBC or The Target, uh, The Target has 70% of their JavaScript content indexed after 13 days, so that's quite bad. But The Guardian only had 34% of their content, JavaScript content indexed after um, after two weeks, which is really, really bad because there's 70, 66% of their content not indexed. And for a publisher, this is definitely a big deal. Big deal. CNBC, I won't even go uh, in depth, but uh, to, to explain how bad of the problem that is, but almost 100% of their JavaScript content wasn't indexed after two weeks. So that was quite a lot of time for Google to go and index that content. And, and as a community, I'm kind of sick and tired of seeing uh, a lot of uh, us SEOs blaming Google for that or saying that JavaScript is evil, uh, that this is happening. And, and in our experience here at Wanli, when we work with technical SEO and JavaScript SEO for, uh, for a lot of e-commerce stores and large brands, we saw that every single JavaScript SEO issue was always 100% self-induced by not understanding the technology fully by, mm, by website owners, basically. So how to avoid uh, those issues in the future? How to make sure that your website is not struggling with this problem? Uh, when it's deployed. The problem is that we found there are no tool set to diagnose clearly this problem and see, okay, this is happening for me for non-technical people. Uh, and we've created a tool and we called it OMFG, so one we made for geeks to explain what uh, is happening to your website and to somehow help you fix your website's uh, problems. OMFG is basically a tool set that's helping uh, a non-technical developer, a non-technical website owners uh, 
and also developers if they need to check something quickly. Tools that helps to see, okay, what relies on JavaScript and what kind of elements of my website may uh, have issues with, with indexing. So if we look at Onely Made for Geeks uh, toolset, it's basically available at oneli.com slash tools. Uh, you can uh, go and, and, and play with that. Uh, word of warning, it's still uh, an early alpha. Maybe now it's closer to beta version. So some things may crash, but um, it should work well for you, hopefully. Uh, one of the key uh, tools uh, we actually <laughs> we are most excited about is WWJD. So what would JavaScript do? Where you can compare a version of the website with JavaScript enabled and disabled and you can see okay how my website is gonna look like before it's rendered and this is a very very good example of BBC where you can see okay BBC is a content website that's not really that we wouldn't call a JavaScript website uh, per se, but you can see, okay, this is a massive problem here because with JavaScript disabled, uh, the website uh, looks completely different to a JavaScript enabled website. So there is a different content uh, and quite a lot of things are changing. So this is something to look closer into. So one of the features in WWJD is that with you can have a look at some of the major meta tags. So you can see, okay, what's happening to the non-rendered version? And in this example, this is actually quite interesting. You can see that rendering is changing the title of the website from BBC Home to BBC Homepage, which is not that bad if you look at the other problems here. And the tag description uh, is changing completely. It's changing to a whole other description, like meta description is completely different after processing the website, website's uh, JavaScript or basically after rendering ver the website, it changes completely. But the biggest issue we found, the biggest and most uh, interesting issue uh, we saw is that the canonical tag of that website uh, goes to a different domain after processing JavaScript. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain that in depth, but basically this is the, 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 the nightmare we all as SEOs want to avoid when JavaScript is executed or a website is rendered and it turns out that your website is canonical is pointing to a different domain. So in case of BBC, it goes from the BBC Co UK to the com version after rendering JavaScript. But also if we look at that, there are quite a lot of links that JavaScript is adding. In this example, it's adding quite a lot of uh, links to God knows why, the Co UK uh, version and uh, is removing quite a lot of links and um, internal links as well. So this is probably extremely big issue for BBC to solve and see, okay, why is my website uh, changing so much after being rendered with JavaScript, especially that meta, uh, meta description, canonicals and so on, they shouldn't really rely on JavaScript at any point for any website. TLDR, uh, too long didn't render, uh, is uh, actually something we've built to check the cost of your website's rendering. And this is very important when you have a mobile phone that's not like very, very new. And if you want to see, okay, maybe my website is targeting people with with, with cheaper devices on, uh, or as in my case, older devices and that are not as efficient as brand new, as for example, a brand new iPhone. So if that's the case, if your user base uh, is not that wealthy, or maybe you're in a developing country um, where, where mobile devices are not very, very expensive and you know, they, not everyone is having iPhone uh, 11 Pro, and then this is a must uh, use tool for you. Too long the, the render basically checks the cost of uh, CPU cost and memory cost of your website's render on a mobile, because a cheaper mobile, an older mobile, is gonna struggle with websites like BBC or, or The Guardian and so on. Just rendering all this JavaScript for a cheaper mobile is gonna be very, very, very slow. So in, in this example, BBC Co UK is extremely expensive to render. There's quite a lot of JavaScript and older mobiles like, like mine uh, are gonna struggle with that quite a lot 
this is something that's not going to be as visible on, or for, on, for example, iPhone X with a very, very good CPU and uh, iPhone 11 and, and some of the latest uh, top devices of their brands. And yeah, we, you can check that for your own domain, see, okay, I'm in the green zone, probably my website is not relying as much on my user's CPU uh, in their mobile or their like performance or, or of uh, my users uh, mobile devices and last but not least TGIF so the Google indexing forecast uh, this is something we're very very excited about as well uh, this is basically our way of checking how well is Google dealing with JavaScript uh, on a timeline so we can see if Google is getting better with indexing JavaScript we check that for manually we add quite a lot of big brands and we manually uh, check Google indexing of those uh, website for uh, JavaScript parts of those websites every day to see uh, what percentage of the content is indexed after one day, uh, one week and two weeks. And we also checked it for HTML indexing and this is where it gets really exciting uh, because we can see that for quite a lot of big brands indexing their HTML pages is not that easy and this is uh, I guess the whole <laughs> reason for this for this video. So if we look at that the percentage of indexed content after two two weeks uh, is quite interesting because for in, in quite a lot of cases we actually have uh, the data showing that like there's 70 or 80 percent of um, HTML content indexed meaning on average meaning that there are quite a lot of brands uh, where their HTML pages so like regular pages with products with news with whatever are not indexed after two weeks so that's extremely extremely bad quite a lot of free tools are coming soon to our tools so stay tuned, uh, we're actually going to launch something very exciting within the next week or two, uh, hopefully, and that's going to take it to a whole other level for you to have uh, a tool that's going to be very helpful to diagnose some of the problems. So stay tuned, sign up to our newsletter or, or subscribe to our YouTube channel somewhere in here and make sure to, 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 to be uh, updated when the, when the new tools are coming out. So that's enough about JavaScript. I'll try not to use the JavaScript word until the end of this video. Let's talk about just HTML. HTML is quite important because, for example, if we look, when we look at the Guardian uh, and this, this, uh, we took like a random sample of uh, 1300 URLs of the Guardian, we saw that, okay, um, all of their HTML pages are indexed, uh, almost all of them after one day, but not all of the uh, big brands are as lucky. So when we look at, um, for example, uh, the Guardian versus some of the other big brands, we see massive problem with them indexing their HTML content, their very basic content. So for example, for Eventbrite, Eventbrite only has 58% of their content indexed after two weeks, which is extremely, extremely bad. Uh, and you can see some of the data, data on, on your screen right now. Uh, blue chart is also showing some interesting issues. The target is struggling with just 3% of the content indexed after one day, which is extremely difficult to understand for uh, for an e-commerce store. So this is something to look into, this is something to address uh, ASAP for those brands. And just to explain the whole problem uh, for, again, people who are not as technical or if you're just beginning with that or if you are technical but want to have some of our insights from our recent experiments, we've created this vicious cycle of, of indexing circle when we actually understood what's leading to HTML content not being, not being indexed for quite a lot of pages. Uh, so uh, the step number one is webmaster so like for example uh, target.com or walmart.com is updating their website with new products um, and yeah so like H&M is adding quite a lot of new I think these are jeans but a tiny part of their of their of their website um, is relying on rendering that page. Uh, so Google crawls your website without seeing all of the links um, because Google doesn't click. And Google is only crawls a part of the domain without finding all of the products. 
which is getting the Google Bot and Google Indexer confused. Uh, they, are, they, they are like, okay, there is something wrong with this website. Uh, we are wasting quite a lot of our crawler budget just to find just a tiny bit of the content and we're circling around and uh, crawler budget falls because of that. Uh, the crawler budget is too low to render your website uh, or to render I have to say that word, to render JavaScript, and then the, the, the circle kind of closes to uh, continue into that vicious cycle of, of indexing, mm, which leads to the problem we're seeing for uh, even bright and, and so on. So um, just to leave you with a little bit of to-do at the very end, go to onely.com slash tools and check your website. It's 100% free. And uh, to reply to some of like, we, we had this Twitter conversation, we're not using any of this data. We don't even have a sales team uh, at Onely. So we just want to share that with the community. We want to help you make better websites. So go to onely.com slash tools uh, and play with your websites different pages so like look at the product page category page whatever you have within your website even if that's wordpress because we're seeing quite a lot of issues here as well uh, crawl your website with or without javascript if you want to do that you can do that with either write or deep crawl uh, enable javascript for one crawl disable that for a second crawl and just compare it if you're seeing exactly the same uh, website graph um, and more data is coming soon thank you so much we've uh, we are gonna launch quite a lot of new tools soon so make sure to subscribe i'm guessing press the bell button to be updated about me uh, in front of camera looking very confused again if, if you enjoy watching that uh, and and subscribe to, to, to our newsletter and make sure to be updated we're gonna share quite a lot of free tools soon to help you make your website index indexable to, in, to index your website in lulu in 2020 and beyond thank you for that and yeah see you soon